Yeah, so, so welcome to Vasily's indoor garden, folks. Haven't done this one before, have I, inside? Well, we're looking at a fiddle leaf fig here because a few of us, a few of you have asked about indoor plants. So I'm going to start with the ones that I've got growing in the house. This is one that was going backwards really bad. Um, I had it outside for a little bit and it just got beaten up by the weather. Stuck a grow stick in it and brought it inside and it has settled down. If you can tell, it's a bit hard to tell. No new growth yet on it, but the leaves that are still on here are really holding well. But I noticed that being inside, that I spend a lot of time outside, it's dry as a bone. They can handle the dryness, but it does need to be hydrated. You can't leave it dry like that for too long a period. So I'm going to take this outside and show you how to rehydrate something that's completely bone dry. And we're also going to repot a spath of fillum. Because this is sitting in a nice glazed pot inside the house and we don't have a saucer underneath it, we don't want to have a saucer underneath it because this plant here doesn't like to be sitting in water. Now it's okay to submerge them in a bucket of water like what we're going to do now once a week, once a fortnight, but indoors if you've got saucers make sure you drain the water away because you need the airflow to be constant through the top and the little holes around the bottom of the pot itself. And if you've got the saucer there holding water, well that's going to cause problems for you and the plant will go backwards. So these plants here in particular are better off on the dry side than on the wet side. So if you're one of those who forgets to water your indoor plants, the fiddle leaf fig would be a good one for you to have. Now if you're wondering where I'm standing folks, we're in a little marquee, a couple of marquees. This is where we're doing our little workshop, the intro part of our workshop. So people come along and uh, well those workshop attendees, uh, participants sitting in here, we do a little bit of a demonstration and then we head out into the orchard and do the hands-on planting, pruning and everything else that goes with it. So back to the fiddle leaf fig, we're going to add some water in here, just a little bit. Now the aim here is to get it to soak it in like a sponge because it's so dry, I should have weighed it first. This would weigh the best part about 400 grams, 500 grams. You know, if you trust me with my human scale abilities. <laughs> and we're gonna put a little bit of EK Butch, only a dribble. Look, at, look how it starts to spread out everywhere. Have a look at it. And then we're gonna put some liquid gold. Yeah. Now the liquid gold cap that I've got on here, one of you wonderful viewers told me about it. It's straight off one of those sauce bottles or the mustard top bottles, whatever you call them. And it's got the little screw top on it. Seal it shut, open it up and easier to handle. I haven't put one on the EK Butch yet. Now we've done that, we're going to fill this up. So we've got about nine litres to go in here. So we're feeding the plant whilst we're hydrating it again. Oh, look, it's floating up. Okay, that's how dry it is, to give you an idea. See that? Let it just sit on its side. Like that. We'll pull this aside for now, and we'll rotate it shortly. Uh, we might just take out the grow stick. So leave that there while we pot up. Now, this is the spath. What the hell is this? Seeds. It's just... <laughs> It's just food. It's got, I don't know, it's my wife, not me. <laughs> anyway, now this spath has been in this pot, I reckon, for at least five years. <gasps> Look what we've got going on here. We've got Millibug. Bugger. We've got Millibug in here. All right, wasn't planning on that. The plant's looking pretty healthy. This is just telling me it needs a feed. So it's a bit of a hungry plant and it's in the warm spot of the house, so that's why the millibug is developing on it. Now, millibug can't exist in the soil, like as you see it here, on the outside of the pod and on the cracks and crevices of plants, so they actually appear. It's a little insect that sucks the sap out of the plant. It's like a little woolly, cotton wool-like insect that you can't even see it moving, but in clusters of it, that's what it looks like in appearance. And it happens a lot on hebes uh, and some other even natives like Westringias, they get it. And I'm just looking on the inside of this pot because normally you see a little bit of a white uh, stain on the inside of the, the pot itself, but nothing there at the moment. This has to be soaked as well. We can't pot this up yet, so we're going to have to soak this with a little bit of eco neem and eco oil, and then we can pot it up. I'm only going to use the eco neem in this case, folks. So it's about two mils per litre, and I've put about four mils in there, I might put a little bit more because it's just poured back down the other way. We need to stir it, and I think I've got the perfect utensil for that. 
<laughs> this bloody spoon. All right, so it should go milky white as it has. So if you've got indoor plants, you can either flush them, so make a solution like I've just done here and water it through, or get the plant itself like I'm doing and soak it in there. That can sit in there as well for a little bit while we inspect the fiddly fig. See how it's going. See the moisture is rising already? That's still dry up there, but it's wet at the bottom. That has got a bit of weight in it. Oh, okay, that's good. Still needs a bit more. Normally something like this, you would soak it for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And it depends on how dry it really is. I shouldn't say I don't know, I do know. At least 20 minutes and sometimes half an hour. So the bigger the pot, the longer you leave it soaking. And the smaller the pot, obviously the less time it needs. So just gonna rotate it around, make sure it gets the moisture all the way through and then we'll put it back in its pot. All right, Let's see how this is going. There we are. It doesn't have to be in there any much longer than that. Now we can't pot this up folks because I just realized where it's come from inside the house, it sits in a glaze pot and the glaze pot is big enough only for this to fit in there. So if I put it up into a larger pot, well, we've got a bit of a problem there. My wife's gonna kill me. I'm gonna have to get a bigger pot for a glaze one that is. But let's look what we can do here. Look how much soil we're missing. So we can raise the plant up to the top, just below the top, and top it up with soil underneath there. And all these, look at that, all the milly bug, that's all gonna die now. That's all gonna disappear. You can see it's just wiping off real easy. And you can do that. And another tip, if you haven't got any eco neem folks, what you can simply do on a nice day when the sun is shining, take it out of the pot and leave it out in the sunlight so it can dehydrate the, the insect itself. Direct sunlight will kill the insect off as well. You need to leave it there for the full day, obviously. So we're gonna pot this up now and we're gonna use our planting mix. Put that aside, we've got it down here. And let's just bring it up here for a second and cut the top off. Now planting mix, for those who don't know what it is, it's our own special blend of secret herbs and spices. In this case, compost, composting material from worm castings, superfood, compost, manures, uh, rice hulls, cocoa fiber, all the good stuff, all the organic stuff. And we're gonna put some at the bottom, like that. It's a bit dark now, I know folks. There's no lighting in here. And we're gonna sit this, that better not fall over. Carefully sit this on top to make sure uh, it's low enough, there we are. Now, it's still very loose because all the soil while it was sitting in has gone soft. So we're gonna backfill around the outside and press it down carefully to stabilize it all. So let's just drop it all here first like this. And the way I like to stabilize my plants or press down the soil that is, is with my two thumbs from the outside of the pot. See, have a look at there. Have a look here. So I just start like that and I press from the outside going in all the way around. You can use your index finger or we'll use whatever finger you want or thumb and just make sure you get it nice and firm down. You can press down on a planting mix in the pot because the planting mix won't go hard. It's a wonderful mixture and it's ideal for these pots as well. So that's it there. Last thing we're going to do is give it a good water and guess what I'm going to use to water it in with. I'm going to use the Eco Neem solution. Just carefully do it in, I put it in too fast, folks. This is a typical Greek version of watering plant pot plants. <laughs> if my mother was here now, she'd kill me. Now, I said I was gonna repot it into a larger pot, and what I just did there is exactly the same. I didn't need to tease the roots out or anything like that because it wasn't pot bound. If I've come across a plant that's pot bound, then I'll show you how to tease the roots out. It's not too hard, but sometimes people are a little bit scared or afraid of causing any damage to the plant by teasing. See how it's soaking in? I'm not pouring it in all at once. And it's the eco neem, and that's just making sure that we get rid of that bug once and for all. And once this dries out, the next round of liquid feeding is gonna be with eco butch and liquid gold. That should be coming out, not yet. See, it hasn't come out from the base yet. Oh, there we are. Now we've hit full capacity. So that's telling me the plant's got enough moisture in it. It's not dehydrated, so it's actually soaking through. It's not running down the sides of the walls, because sometimes that can happen when it's completely dehydrated. And that's why we're soaking the Ficus liriata bambina, which is the uh, fiddly fig. Oh yeah, we've got a bit of water in there. So that is soaking beautifully. Now that, all this needs now, because we can't get water to the top, is to put this back in its pot. 
because if I had it completely submerged, it would have been great, but I haven't got a deep enough pot. So what we're going to do is pop this back into its pot, let it drain out a little bit, pop it in and take it outside. And we're going to water it with the same solution. Now I'm using the bucket, folks, not a watering can. It should soak through straight away. See that? See how quickly it's soaked through? That's what you want happening. Now that needs a top up because we've got exposed roots now. See all that? So we're going to top that up as well with a little bit of planting mix. But upon inspecting this little pot here, folks, I realised that this plant here also needs to go up a size in pot. And you know what that means? It means having a meeting with the boss and talking about a larger glazed pot, feature pot inside the house. So, but for now, which is not going to happen anytime soon because we don't need more pots in the, inside the house, we need more plants outside the house. <laughs> Actually, you need both, inside and outside. Now, I'm going to be very careful because this stuff is just sitting on the surface in doing this, in hydrating it. A nice watering can with a rose head on it would be ideal, folks. Yes, I know. But I like doing things the hard way and we're getting there all right so when it comes to hydrating your plants take your time make sure you get them into a bucket of water if they completely dehydrate it otherwise the water is going to run down the sides of the walls and you think you're watering but in fact you're doing absolutely nothing if you've got a saucer at the bottom of your pot inside as a feature make sure you wash out the water or tip out the water sorry so it's not sitting in there because otherwise the plants like this won't wick it up as, as fast as you think if they do that's fine but if you find water sitting there for longer than a couple of days remove the water from the saucer otherwise it'll start to decay and start to rot it'll go it'll go bad it'll go sour and when it comes to repotting always go up a size so your pot plants don't become pot bound because that will also cause a lot of plants to go backwards and when you soak it in the bucket Always use a little bit of liquid gold and eco butch. That way your plant's getting a feed at the same time as it's getting hydrated. And that is vital for long-term healthy indoor plants. They oxygenate the house, folks. They clear out the environment. They give you better airflow for you. So they're very vital for us and very important to have inside as well as outside. Because you know when you're outside in the garden, the air is so much cleaner, so much fresher, so much easier to breathe. And you should have the same thing going on inside your house. Well, there you go. Planting Mix, Liquid Gold, EK Butch, available on our website. If you're watching this episode, just as it's been uploaded, switch over to 693AM. Uh, that's radio with me and Darren on the weekend gardening on 3AW. Folks, give us a call if you've got any gardening problems or share some great gardening ideas as well. And don't forget, the EOFI coupon code for end of financial year sale is still on. Take advantage of it and enjoy your day. From Eva Silly, Maresi.